managed to craft in the last century, century and a half, a little bit less. Um, it's all within the competition world, like a, a controlled environment, two guys who can send to fight. Um, so what, when I was talking with Lavelle, he says that, you know, I, I we really don't need groundwork. Like if you fall down or something, like I'm going to stick you and that's it. But, you know, we should understand that, you know, the city where I live in, it's not the grassland or where you're staying is not New York or where. So we cannot just pull out a knife and stick each other. So just because you fell down. So I would say a lot of the elements, like especially for military controlling, really staying there. And then if needed, you can put put the guy to sleep. Um, so I would say there is a necessity for groundwork, not in the sense how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu do it, because a lot of them are just shifting into stuff that aren't really applicable, like only playing a leg lock game or Berimbolo or uh, lapel guards or whatever. So mm -hmm. um, I'd say the, the judo range of how you fall down and how you transition into the ground is the best model up on like today I've seen because you have that really like do or die mentality and the uh, understanding. It's really explosive. You have to do it and you have to do it now. And then if things don't work out as fully as you wanted them to be, you still have the ground option. So self-defense wise, this is the best in my, in my opinion. So for example, when th this is happening like way too much to the point where it's starting to somewhat irritate me. Um, oh, I felt I fought this great martial artist. I took him down. I submitted him like a BJJ blue belt or th that's why BJJ is the best art. But you're still talking in a context that, first of all, it's not realistic. You have two guys who consent to fighting in a controlled environment in a club with courtesy and respect to each other. Uh, and two, like, just go on Gracie breakdown. You will see Henner and Hiron telling you, don't go to the ground. OK, so what are we doing here? Right? Yeah, so, I, think, I think it's people. People definitely have a, a flawed perception sometimes where, mm, for example, mixed martial arts, MMA, uh, the current trending, you know, UFC style of doing it, right? It's cool. I love it. I love watching it. But it's people sometimes tell me like, oh, well, uh, you know, the, the, the 12 to 6 elbow can't work because, you know, they don't use in the UFC. I'm like, they don't use in the UFC because it's too effective. And stomping. You you would, yeah. You don't soccer kick people, so, you don't soccer kick people in the head because it's too effective. Not because it doesn't work in the street. Yeah. It's because it is too effective and will hurt someone's neck or head possibly permanently. And they can't afford to do that. And they don't want athletes going through that, right? It's So people sometimes get a twisted perception. They think they see fighting on TV and they think, okay, this is everything, right? Or they see jujitsu working yes. and say, this is everything. And I said, and I would tell this person, and I have in other conversations, and I've done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm only a blue belt in it, but I have um, basic understanding. And I can tell you if there's a lot of, uh, if I can not do that in a self-defense situation, I prefer not to. Because you are tied up with this one person uh, on the ground. For a long time. In for potentially a long time, hopefully not. But hey, if he has some skill, it, on can, the ground, yeah, it can be yeah. a long time, right? Long time, especially by self-defense uh, standards. And it is currently practiced. It may not have always been intended this way, but it's currently practiced in a setting where you're going into it with a dualistic one-on-one. -on -one, I'm a dual you on the ground uh, mentality on nice, comfortable tatami. And I'm not saying you should train on rough terrain that's going to scratch you up and give you tetanus or whatever, but, you know, it's going, it's going, it warps a lot of people's expectations of what the skill set is uh, good for, right? And uh, I think it, it definitely has a place, but I, I think it's one of those, mm, it's one of those beautiful things that is taken out into isolation. Yeah. And, work to a high degree for sure when you bring it back into everything else there's a lot of pieces that may or may not still fit because it mm -hmm. worked in that environment mm -hmm. not all of it works here but if you're in back in the so-called everything goes environment 
and the person you're up against has no idea what to do on the ground. They're just awkward. He's awkward beyond doing a jab cross. Oh, great. Take him down, choke him out. Awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's a certain merit to it, but we can't treat it like it's the end all be all. Uh, so that's that's the most extreme of range. You and another guy are on the ground together. That's the most extreme of close range. Yeah, but if you yeah. take it further out, like Taekwondo, mm-hmm. you get you get you get uh, a spinning uh, spinning roundhouse or spinning hook he- hook kick to the head. That's effective. But you have. Have to you seen an axe kick in MMA? It is scary. Yeah. It's scary. I've, I've taken a hook kick to the face. I was out for five minutes. But I will say, though, uh, I wouldn't necessarily default to that on the street. Yeah. What if I slip? Yeah. Like, just as simple as that. What if I slip? <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story. Like, it's, it's, it's actually on my channel. It's, I, there was these two military guys. They were, like, fighting in the dorm room. And mm-hmm. you can see, like, a clear BJJ sequence happening. Single leg, run the pipe. The guy defended mm-hmm. it by grabbing the head, going down mm-hmm. for a guillotine. Uh, did the whole thing with the wrists, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy who was caught in the guillotine, who was doing the single leg, so they clearly, both of them train in uh, BJJ. He just reached in and grabbed the guy's uh, groin. And oh, you can see I... the guy. You saw yeah, that? I think I've seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you, if you can hear him saying, please let go. Okay, I'm sorry. And. He has, still has the guillotine on. It's like, it's such a wake-up call. And also, another yeah. thing that happens in gyms or dojos is you're going up against a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, and then you go in, you you dominate the grips, you throw them effectively, but you're not just going to let go. You continue, you engage with them. And obviously, because they have the more experience on the ground, they manage to either really dominate the the, the positions or they get the tap. But in reality, that's not what going to happen after I throw you. So they say like, oh, he took me down, but I took his back later on. And I, I don't know what I did when I got the mount and arm bar. So, but that, have, that fight should have ended like a long time ago. Like I shared a Harai Goshi on the street just yesterday. Mm-hmm. And there was, it, there, it wasn't like, you know, sometimes you fall, like you can see like there's some aching. There was nothing. It was like a limp body on the ground. Yeah. So we need to stop this illusion that it's like the best art because... You know, it takes you on the ground. Even Pedro Valente, like El- Elio Gracie Blackwell, he told me that, sure, one against one in a controlled environment, that's the best strategy. Take them down and beat them with Spear Newaza. Uh, Oda it's, it's, in it's the why, 1910s. That's why it showed up so many times in uh, in, in judo's history of, uh, you know, a, a camp and, training for yes. competition. Right. That's our strategy. Yeah, it's valid. Oda, in he did that. that. That's how he won. Yeah. And he was like a captain of a and judo team though. so mm-hmm. and then later on kind of says like okay go develop Newaza. so in the 1930s he really went all out he has books from the 1920s um you can see him uh pulling guard and doing all the stuff that's quote invisible jujitsu today uh but we need to stop you know because it's you know in a controlled environment two guys with courtesy and respect to each other saying that Okay, he took him down. That's not what's going to happen on the ground or uh, on the streets. Like even the best, they will tell you, don't go to the ground. And I would agree. But in yeah. case you happen to find yourself there, like in judo, you know what to do. Yeah, it's 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 an important skill. Uh, and I think, you know, there there are there are moments where you might use it. I mean, if you're at a if you're at a if you're at a barbecue and. Uh, you know, you're cooking food and somebody gets too drunk and starts talking a little too much. And, you know, maybe you, maybe you take them to the ground. But again, it's it's for special moments where, especially the way it's trained today, commonly. Yeah. Yeah. It's for moments where you want to take the person down the ground. You want to apply that body and leverage. And you don't want to kick, stab, punch, slam, uh, break the other person. Yeah. It's So if you aren't allowed to do those things for whatever reason. It's amazing. Wonderful. Do it. Just like I was saying with Taekwondo. If you want to take that skill set into isolation and develop it to a really high degree, awesome. Just remember if it's anything goes, you need to adapt it to anything goes. And chances are you're not going to throw out five five kick combinations when it's anything goes. Chances are you're going to fight a little more normally. Yeah. And then when you realize you have that opening, then but only then, because you're not willing to risk it. 
Yeah, right? like the, so, I've shared a lot of self defense on my channel and stuff that they use, like especially the judo examples, is it's the stuff that we teach the little kids. Oh yeah, it's simple. It's simple stuff. So that, that I, I wanted to come to the, the ground aspect and we just kind of shifted and went on, on this huge <laughs> tangent, but I think it was needed. But um, these arts like uh, su sumo, boh, sui jiao, in today's aspect, like we can talk about military. Okay, if, if I'm if I'm down and I posted my hand on the ground, I lose basically in boh and sumo. And like if you and me are fighting and I like I completely lost my balance and I posted my hand, I'm in a very compromised position. You can just take out your... Uh, your uh, Manchu Manchetti, oh, Manchu Manchetti, that's a good name. And then just like basically end me. And I, I get it from a militaristic standpoint, but in today's age, like, like I said, I'm not in the grassland. Lavelle is in the grassland. You're not in New York or something. So we need to have some type of uh, groundwork added. Um, so I think in today's age, like why are these arts still with no groundwork? Like, I, I get militaristically what would happen in the past in Boh, Sumo, and Sui Jiao, but like I believe Sui Jiao, you can only go down with Dugga, like O Chigari, like a drop O Chigari. There, yeah, there's that one version, yeah. But um, why, like, why is there no groundwork? And I don't know, that's my question, basically. Oh, that's a valid question. Um, I would say so, it's like this I think there's two uh, three ways to look at sui jiao uh, or boh right uh one is from the cultural perspective and so i think in that way things are a little more cemented mm -hmm. another way is to look at it as a sport and as a sport it's a sport right uh it's a form of wrestling competition and each one has its rules better or worse we talked about that earlier you know different kinds of rule sets will encourage different kind of attributes values uh, and then there's another view which is it as a martial art um for the mongols i think it's traditionally it was just fine because like you said it's paired with all kinds of weaponry you know soccer kick someone in the head grab your knife stab them cut them whatever right for people in living in this type of situations we're in in a more urban environment a lot of laws against this kind of stuff self-defense can be a tricky thing legally things like that uh it is, how do I say, it is oftentimes good to have some kind of submission grappling. Yeah. But um, or I think just, I think the minimum thing is to, to pin. So, to pin. yeah, so he, here's the thing. Uh, some people in, in, in Shui Jiao and Boh do pin. Uh, it, in Shui Jiao, really? it, doesn't, it doesn't get you uh, a lot of points as far as, uh, as far as, Competition is concerned, it gets you one point rather than three. So Wait, say you I can got, in Sui Jiao? You can. You I, you they they fall first, mm -hmm. and they get pinned under you. You still get the point. Oh, you I just see. get one point rather than three. Okay. So you so people could pin all along. I mean, uh, some say someone who is a specialist at grabbing people and pinning them, they can win a Sui Jiao match. They're just going to be more tired mm -hmm. because they're getting one point for each takedown as opposed to three. Oh, because so they didn't said, remain standing up. Okay, I see. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So the, the rule set is based on, again, the history and culture behind it, right? And right. I don't necessarily disagree. I think it, it builds good attributes. Uh, that said, you can pin. You're just going to be in competition. You're going to be more tired. But you can do all of those same throws and fall and pin with them. I do it sometimes too, uh, just because I want to. I want to really make sure I got the throw. I sent you it in. I I, yeah. I fall with it, right? Um, I do that quite a lot. Uh, that said, it's the pins are there, so that's one thing. There are also a bunch of uh, locks, right? In uh, in Chinese, we call it china, but uh, there are a bunch. Of, there are also a bunch of locks in there. They aren't commonly used in competition although many competitions don't outright ban them except for a few but standing uh, locks there's 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 standing ones but they can be maintained as you go down right so for example i get a i guess i get a i can get a kimura position kick you over 
and land with it, sit on top of you, and I guess I could finish it, right? That's not. Oh uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, Theoretically, that's. Not, it's just. It's, but that's. But that's a matter of. That's a matter of uh, practice. Mm. So these things okay. exist in the art, but yeah. are they are they practicing it? That 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 would be mm. that would be my question. Some people are, especially the people with a purely um, law enforcement focus. But if they're going into competition, yeah, they're going to be doing that a lot less, right? And I think a parallel we can draw here with uh, with with judo might be how many judoka are doing their judo against a guy with a practice knife or something. I would say mostly don't, right? Yeah. And it's the same in the strategy world. Although there are attributes built in for self-defense, mm -hmm. uh, most people do practice it as a martial arts hobby or sport, and 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 that's that. So you know, there's there's things in here like, for example, uh, when I come around to do a um, what do you call it, uh, like a, a headlock and then. Uh, uh -huh. Cut across with a leg is like a taitoji, but with a headlock instead. What yeah. do you call that? Koshiguro Makubinage. Okay, yeah. Uh, with that, in uh, especially in the Taiwanese branch of Shuaijiao, that comes with a with a strike, a, a strike to the head as we cinch in and throw. Right. Um, there's another one that has a that has a you know a jam a jam under the chin. You can make it a make it to the throat. There's a lot of these movements that we practice, but in competition, there a bunch of them are illegal, right? There's no over hitting people. There's no over locking wrists, right. uh, locking elbows and all that stuff. So I think the issue is not so much the stuff doesn't exist, although a developed Nevaza game in Shuaijiao doesn't exist, but there are locks that you can take into throws and maintain them and you can pin them. It's just a matter of there isn't that particular format for people to be um, training it to a highly competitive level. Uh, should there be is another question, right? Because um, there is culture behind any art. Mm. Right? Just like judo has the judo gi. Uh, Shaijiao has the Shaijiao jacket and its particular rule set. Obviously, it's changing, but the traditional rule set much closer to the Mongol origins. Um, should these modalities be changed? If I live in a, an area like Brazil, should I have a gi? Or should I use, like, I don't know, a t-shirt? Yeah. Right? I don't know. Maybe something like a strideout jacket is more appropriate for certain parts.